Let's get Buddha. 916-909-1320. Buddha, what's happening? Good to hear from you, brother. What's up, family? How y'all doing today, man? We good, baby. Hold on. Hey, it's good to talk to y'all again. Uh, I basically wanted to answer the question that y'all was talking about. Uh, you said how many pieces is sack away for real to being like, I guess, a contender. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like they pretty much two pieces away because, like, in the playoffs, you basically see they really playing like eight, nine man rotations. So I say that uh, you got like Sabonis, you got uh, Fox, you got Keegan, you got uh, Kev. You still need a uh, somebody at the four that can like guard like Giannis is the big fours like you know you have so we can have uh, advantage most nights in the like paint but we need something like that but as far as uh, I feel like we need another three and D wing off the bench too and my guy would be Jalen McDaniels because uh, his brother he fit next to uh, he fit next to guys like Nas Reed and stuff like that that's who we, uh, some people was talking about. And I feel like uh, Jalen McDaniels will fit because he got coast to coast ability. He's a three and D guy. He hover around uh, league average shooting. He's he got the same body frame as his brother, and like he's very active on the defensive end. And he can pass and he rebounds better than Harrison Barnes. To be honest, because Harrison Barnes he's at four point five rebounds, and uh, Jalen McDaniels he's at four point three. He played last minute, so I wanted to see what you guys think about him. All right, Buddha. Appreciate you. 916-909-1320. If you want to get in, any thoughts on uh, Buddha's roster overhaul there with a couple of those role players? Yeah, I mean, I, I really like Jalen McDaniels. I like both of McDaniels. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I do. Um, but like when it comes to Jalen, I have to ask the question is like, where does he fit in the grand scheme of things? Is he better than Kessler Edwards? Does he have a higher end potential? And the the, the answer is he might. But you don't know. And I, I think he's a, a guy who put up a bunch of numbers on a on a bad team, on a team that had a bunch of injuries a, as far as Charlotte. He got traded to Philly. And, and again, I, I like him. And I think that he's a player that might fit into what you're trying to do. Uh, but he, if you're a team like the Kings, you need guys that you know what they are. And so if I like to like an example how I look at Jalen McDaniels. Is he better than, um, why am I, Glenn Robinson the third, Or is he that same player? Is he a player who got a little bit of extra opportunity, and so he put up a little bit better numbers, mm-hmm. and then you think that he might be something, but you know he can't really match that 10 points per game that he averaged with Charlotte. Like I'm just not sure that he's like a game changer. Now, I, defensively, he's I think he's good. Uh, he's got length. He's six, nine. These are the types of players that the Kings need to find. The question is, can they find a version who has playoff experience, who has shown that they can do this for five years, not just one year. And even with Kessler, that's the problem with Kessler. Like Kessler Edwards could very well turn into one of these guys that you're looking for, that you're Mm -hmm. dreaming of. Right. Mm -hmm. But you're a team that might not have time to wait for that. And who doesn't have the ability to hide a player like that all the time. You're not so good that you can hide a player like that. I mean, look at a developing player. Yeah. Even or a player that has some inadequacies that you can't, you know, you just can't hide. So look at Philly when Philly has like this monster roster with uh, Tobias Harrison and uh, Joel Embiid and, and James Harden and even Tyrese Maxey. Like you can have a Matisse Thibel who cannot score at all, who averages like three or four points a game, but who's a great defender. That's fine. The Kings aren't that same. They they can't do that. Like every team is different in the way their makeup is, and you have to figure out it's again, we always it's sort of this blending of of like how do you find a player that fits perfectly with De'Aaron Fox and Devonis Sabonis? two guys who don't shoot. So you need to surround them with shooters. What you can't do is surround them with shooters that people think might be able to hit a shot because they sag off of guys who they think might be able to hit a shot. If they know a guy can hit a shot like Kevin Herter, the, he has a, a gravitational pull towards him. The defense does. Same thing with, with Malik Monk. Like People fear Malik Monk's shooting ability. I'm not sure that a guy like Jalen McDaniels can can be that player like right away. Maybe he proves that that's who he is, but you have to have a team willing to give a player enough leash to show that that's who they are, or you have to go find a player who already is that and has shown it over the course of, you know, 
multiple years. You would you consider Malik? I'm gonna phrase this the right way. Would you consider Malik a game changing acquisition for Sacramento? I think he's one of a couple of game changing acquisitions. Like we talked about this last year, where like I kept saying, you need more Harrison Barnes. You don't need to reduce a Harrison Barnes. Uh-huh. You need the Kings came in last season. They needed like four or five, six players of mm-hmm. that level to raise the value of everybody. And I think they went out and they got three of those players. And then I think Trey Lyle stepped up and became one of those players that you can kind of count on in that situation. So the reason I like Malik was Malik was good in LA, but it's, Mm -hmm. it's LA it's LeBron. It's Anthony Davis, like expectations, legacy franchise, like the whole deal. Could there like, what I'm wondering is who's, who's the player who's like, yeah, they're, they're solid on they're fine. They're good on the team that they're on, but they get to a situation like Sacramento where they could potentially shine a little bit more. Maybe that's McDaniels. Maybe that's Nas Reed. You know, maybe, maybe those are the types of, to use the term that you just, those game changing acquisitions on the surface. It's like, Oh, that's a, that's a, Malik on the surface, this is cool. Like I like Malik, like Malik and De'Aaron. Like I get it. This is a solid acquisition. It turned out to be extremely important for a variety of reasons. We I talk totally about agree. We talk about swag and confidence. Like Malik brought that. Malik was really good on the floor. He was incredible for the most part in the in the in the in the. In the he, he was really good in the Golden State series. What player? Like, and I think that's what. Sometimes I feel like that's how we have to look at free agents. We look at names. Sometimes we look at situations and we look at the way a player plays on the team that they're on, or we look at a player's impact that they have on a team that they're on, which is completely fair because it's what we know, but you take them out of that. How much more can they offer? How better can they be on a team like Sacramento or just a different team in general? Okay. So uh, specifically with Malik, I said this during the season. I think that Malik has always had this personality. He's always been this guy, but early in his career, it was looked at as a bit of a a negative. He was a guy who you looked at who was fun, who has energy, but maybe didn't have the substance, right? He goes to the Lakers, and when he's with the Lakers, I think he learned how to be a professional, like maybe a little bit more than he had in his previous stop. But then I also think that his his personality on the team, like where he fit in the team was so far down on the pecking order that you've got like superstars there. You have big personalities there. And so he was almost looked at as like a little brother. He gets to Sacramento. Everyone is about his age. Everybody is a, there's a bunch of players that are around his playing ability level. Mm -hmm. And then your superstars or your star level players, they aren't LeBron and AD they're Devonis Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox, guys who haven't established themselves as that next level. So Malik walks into a room where he's allowed to be himself, allowed to express himself, allowed to come out of his shell and really fill the role. I think also putting him in as a six man and leaving him as a six man and making like really allowing him to be the leader of the second team gave him an identity that he didn't have in previous stops. And I think it's perfect, right? As a, as an undersized two starting for the Lakers. Sure. He got a lot of open looks because you're playing with really, really good players who draw a lot of attention with the Kings. He was able to become something different. That was, you know, that, that Bobby Jackson role that uh, Lou Williams or Jamal Crawford. And, and I think he can get better from there. Jordan uh, Clarkson. Now, when you say, who is it that player that you look around the league I'm going to keep pointing to the same guy because the Kings, as much as they needed an energizer and someone like Malik Monk, they need someone who can take that approach on the defensive end and galvanize the team that way. The same way that Malik did as this energizer bunny and bring this energy. I think that OG Ananobi is a guy who's always been a third or fourth option on his team. There's always been a Fred Van Vliet or a Kyle Lowry or Pascal Siakam or a Kawhi Leonard in front of him that that absorbs a lot of the pressure as far as offensively and who and what he can be. But if you were allowed to take him and put him in a new situation where he could be the third leading scorer 
and he can also be the galvanizing force on the offensive end, I mean, on the defensive end, mm -hmm. that you could see a player who takes his game to where he is an all-defensive player, a second-team all-defensive or first-team, depending on the year, but who also can be a like considered one of the better two-way players in the league.